Hi, I'm Jim Hendrick. And I'm Dick Crippen, welcoming you to the world of unlimited hydroplane racing. You know, Dick, you and I have teamed up on radio and television for many, many years in unlimited hydroplane racing. We've seen it all. And we've been firsthand on some of the scenes we're about to see. That's true, Jim. This sport has come a long way since it started many years back. And we've seen an evolution of a sport. We've seen legends actually made and speeds increased tremendously. We're going to see it all coming right up. We're going to take you from 1904 to the present day on Thunderboats. Race boats have captured the fancies of fans coast to coast for over 60 years now. An unlimited hydroplane averages 30 feet in length, 14 feet wide, and powered by various engines, hits straightaway speeds of nearly 200 miles an hour. For you football fans, that's going goalpost to goalpost on a football field in just under two seconds. Early race boats such as this by Garwood, powered by various multiple auto engines such as four Packard V-12s. And then came the introduction of the World War II aircraft engines as they became available. There was the Allison engines, the Rolls Merlin, Rolls Griffin, Allison turbo power plants, and lately, the turbine engines from the Chinook helicopters, which in present time seem unbeatable. There are various types of auto marine engine combos trying to compete, and they are in the testing stages. The unlimited hydroplanes are the fastest race boats in existence today. One man, strapped in his race boat, surrounded by an F-16 fighter plane canopy, literally flies his hydroplane around the two to two and a half mile courses. Only nine square inches of sponson surface touch the water, while only half the propeller is submerged. The other half throws up a wall of water 50 feet high and 200 feet back. This is known as the rooster tail and can be very dangerous if entered by another boat. The second spray of water scene comes off the skid fin during a high-speed turn. An unlimited hydroplane also has driver-controlled ailerons that are installed on both sides of the main hull up front and leading to each sponsor. This keeps the boat from flying. An unlimited hydroplane does not know it's not an airplane and will from time to time try to fly, as you'll soon see. section is made up of two vertical tail fins for stability and across those fins is a wing providing lift or least resistance to the water surface by the hull. Cars use it for down pressure and traction. Now, here's an open cockpit vote. Miss Budweiser. No canopy. The driver flies out. How he bends. His chute opens. They used to have a backpack chute. That slows him down, spins him around. His feet hit the water first. That was the only protection they had in earlier days. There were two kinds of hauls. The conventional haul where the driver sat over the prop and behind the engine. Now the first cab over actually was a bow rider. It was the Thrift Way 2, designed by Ted Jones. The next cab over step, pickle fork version. Driver still in front of the engine, but back a little farther. And of course, no restraints and an open cockpit. Safety was vastly improved with the installation of the reinforced cockpit, the F-16 canopy, quick escape hatches, more protection for the driver, as is evident by the flips you're about to see, all three drivers walked away. Millions of fans line the shores of each race site year after year. Complete families fill their picnic baskets and coolers and make it a complete all-day outing lured by the speed and thrills provided by these Thunderbolts whose drivers ride the outer edge in the spirit of competition. It was no different back in 1904 when displacement hulls competed for the first APBA Gold Cup. Five, five up. 
nor during the Garwood Golden Era from 1970 into the 1930s, when the legendary Garwood, with riding mechanic Orlin Johnson at his side, began setting and defending America's speed titles with his Miss America racing hulls. We're very happy this morning because we have just brought back to the United States the world record on water. Our speed was at an average of 124 and 9100 miles per hour. Very gratifying to feel the fact that we ran in more or less rough water and also in a rainstorm. That rainstorm isn't so hot. <laughs> the uh, rain just hits you in the face, it's like truck shots. Of course, I could get down behind my wheel here and get some protection, but my partner on the left, he had to stay out and take it. Now, he's ready to go home and go to sleep if you'll just let us go. You're looking at a piece of history, the Slow Motion 4. This boat, Stan Sears and Company, came to the Motor City of Detroit back in 1950. They won the Gold Cup that year. And by those rules at that time, if you won the Gold Cup, you got the name which city it raced in the next year. The next year was 1951. This boat brought the Unlimiteds out to the great Northwest. The city of Seattle hosted its first race. The rest is history, 40 years. And this boat is symbolic of that. Not one driver, well, a driver and a throttle man. Those were the days of a lot of fun. Of course, hydroplane racing and technology has really advanced over the years, but everybody's got a soft spot in the heart for the slow motion four. In fact, the first closed course lap speed in excess of 100 mile an hour was set by Lou Fagel in the slow mo four during the 1950 Harmsworth in Detroit while racing on a five mile nautical course. Back in 1950, in slow-mo five, Lou Fagel was at the wheel of a test run on the back chute of Lake Washington. A complete 360 degree flip. Fagel came out, he was not hurt. The boat landed right side up. Bill Stead of the Maverick was the first man to hit 120 mile an hour lap when he turned the three mile course in Seattle and Gold Cup qualifying back in 1958. His three-lap average, 119. Bill Brow from Burien, Washington, was the first man to average 120 for three-lap average when he qualified the Miss Exide at Seattle during the 1965 Gold Cup. The 130-mile barrier broken in 78 by Bill Muncy in his Atlas Van Lines entry, 132.2 at San Diego's Jack in the Box Regatta. Likewise, on the same San Diego course during the Circus Circus Thunderboat Regatta in 1980, Bill Muncy was the first to break the 140 mile per hour mark. He toured the two and a half mile course in his Atlas van lines at 140.625 miles per hour. Then the turbines took over the speed records. Chip Hanauer of Seattle took the speed lead in 1985 when he hit 153.061. That was in his turbine powered Miller American entry during the running of the Columbia Cup at Tri-Cities, Washington. Tom Deeth of Detroit became the first driver to ever break the 160 mile per hour barrier. That was when he qualified the Miss Budweiser at 160.122 during the Thunder on the Ohio race at Evansville, Indiana in 1990. Jim Hanauer in the Circus Circus and Tommy Deeth battled all year in that Evansville race. Very, very, very close as they come around corners, number one and two, and down the back chute. A slight edge is taken by the Miss Budweiser, Tommy Deeth, and in the rooster tail, and out of action goes the Circus Circus. The Miss Budweiser with Tommy Deeth goes on to win. Tommy Deeth, Chip Hanauer, always competitors. Look at this at Onondaga Lake in Syracuse, New York, side by side. Here they set the fastest three lap heat in history, averaging over 150 mile an hour for the entire heat. In that 1990 tight season, in qualifying on salt water at San Diego, Tommy Deeth set a new record of 167 mile an hour, the fastest man yet. And then Chip Hanauer came right back at the end of the day, and before time ran out, set the fastest speed yet, 168.128 in the Miss Circus Circus while qualifying for the Budweiser Cup. Lots of excitement in the Budweiser Cup in San Diego 1990. Here's George Woods Jr., a fire aboard the Mr. Pringles. He radioed into his crew and said, hey guys, I asked for a Bud Light. The Budweiser on the right, the Circus Circus on the left, side by side, bow and bow all day long, and it came down to the finale. 
not answering the call because of a problem. Here's steam coming off the Miss Budweiser. Tommy D is out of the race. That left the door wide open for 400 points for the Circus Circus, the Pink Lady, and Chip Hanauer would close the high point gap, leave it all up for grabs in the season finale, Lake Mead, Las Vegas, Nevada. A penalty and a fact in the final that the Miss Budweiser jumped the clock, gave it a clear shot. It was a come from behind victory. All odds against him, Chip Hanauer comes through, takes the checkered flag, and is the world champion for 1990, coming from behind in the last two races. Chip Hanauer, the 1990 world champion. I can't believe it. You know, it's just such a tribute to Mr. Bennett, my team. We were down 1,000 points after Tri-Cities, and the guys never gave up. They just took a day at a time, and here we are, national champion. Following their victory, Chip Hanauer and the Circus Circus racing team retired. Tommy Deeth in the Miss Budweiser was injured in this spectacular auto racing accident. And neither man, Tommy Deeth or Chip Hanna, are likely to meet on the water again. Oddly enough, the fastest straightaway speed record on water ever for a pop driven race boat was set back in 1962. April 17th, Gunnersville, Alabama. Roy Duby, driving George Simon's Miss US 1, set through the traps twice at an average of 201.419 mile an hour. Still a record holder, but now a spectator, Roy Duby. You have to uh, make a run one way and then turn around and come back the other way with an average time between the two. How old are you now, Roy? 78. 78 years old. Would you get one in one of these boats now? Well, I'd, just, uh, I'd be curious to see how these turbines are going. I might take a little ride if I was offered. <laughs> He took a big ride over 30 years ago in this boat, 200.419 mile an hour. Closest attempt to make to breaking that record was Bernie Little's Miss Budweiser in 1979. They did not succeed. Now let's take a look at the accomplishments of legends past and present in the sport of unlimited hydroplane racing, starting with the infamous Ted Jones, designer, builder, and driver. He became the first to successfully race a prop riding three-point haul. The year was 1950. The first boat, Slow Mo 4. Ted Jones also designed many other boats, including Guy Lombardo's Tempo. He was the first ever to see the driver in front of the engine in the Thriftway 2, as we saw earlier. Here are some of the other famous Jones halls. Such Trust with Jack Schaefer. The Hawaii Kai. The infamous Miss Barnall, the Green Dragon, if you will. The Maverick. Bill Muncy's first ride, Miss Thrift Away. Now let's check the top three drivers in unlimited history. Bill Muncy of Detroit, then Seattle, and finally San Diego is the leader with 62 victories, including a record eight gold cups. Muncy drove the Miss Great Lakes in one race in 1950 before the bottom fell out and it sank. Then began his career in earnest in 1955 when he filled the seat of the Miss Thrift Way. No one loved the sport more than Bill Munson. Racing can truly be an artistic experience, you know, the blending of man and machine. When you consider the variables, the top speed of around 200 miles per hour, a cornering speed of around 140, with an engine turning around 4,500 revolution, a propeller that turns 14,000 revolutions per minute, a machine that's able to accelerate from 100 to 160 in six seconds. When you consider all of these variables, plus a cockpit temperature of about 160 degrees, it truly can be, at times, a ballet, a symphony in motion Ocean, a marvelous, wonderful, exciting thing. Hey, it's spectacular to drive. It must be spectacular to watch. A complete program could be filled on this man alone. His career ended when he lost his life during a blowover accident in the Atlas fan lines during the final heat of the World Championship race at Acapulco, Mexico in 1981. Chip Hanauer of Seattle is second in career wins with 36. His career began in 1976 and ended in his retirement after winning the world championship in the Circus Circus entry in 1990. Hanauer was also second to Muncie in Gold Cup victories. However, in Muncie's eight Gold Cups, he never managed to win more than three in a row. I often say when I win one Gold Cup and one national championship, I was going to get out while I'm still here. But uh, 
I just can't imagine sticking around long enough to do that. And I think it really shows how masterful Bill was when here I'm the second winningest driver in the sport and I'm only about halfway to his record. I think it's a, it speaks highly of Bill. Hanauer won all of his seven gold cups in succession from 1982 through 1988, which is a record that may never be broken. Dean Chenoweth, a transplanted Floridian from Ohio, ranks third on the all-time drivers list with 25 victories and four gold cups. Chenoweth's career began in 1969 in Lee Shainis' Mir Sheet Medal Special. Later, he had great success in a cab over, surviving three accidents, including this one where he lost his rudder during a run in Seattle. His career ended in a fatal accident when he flipped the Miss Budweiser during a qualifying attempt on the Columbia River in Tri-Cities, Washington, 1982. The first canopy appeared in the Rolls Griffin-powered Miss Budweiser in 1985. The driver Jim Cropfell won two races that year, Syracuse and San Diego. This concept for driver safety was pioneered by Bernie Little and his Budweiser crew. We've always been blessed with super good crew people and that are very concerned about other people's life and well-being. And when you put a family man out in that boat, you got to be sure he's going to be safe and be able to come home. So it got down to where we were having problems and accidents and uh, uh, getting throwing out of, thrown out of the boat. Well, uh, to our company, Anheuser Bush, August Bush, our chairman, uh, he suggested that we really do something to put something into this sport that will make it safe for all of our drivers. And so we proceeded uh, for a couple years working on a enclosed cockpit. And we did a lot of research, a lot of development. We had a crew chief, uh, then Jeff Neff. Jeff started it. So therefore, we did develop an enclosed cockpit. Everyone that's flipped, and there's been, I mean, there must be six, seven drivers that's come up to me and said, Bernie, uh, you and your crew have made it to where my, I'm here. You saved my life. And uh, when a driver is upside down, he's going to be picked up and brought out OK. Never was this more evident than during this double flip as the Miss Madison and Circus Circus at San Diego go over simultaneously in 1988. The Miss Madison with Ron Snyder inside is upside down. Now the Circus Circus is right side up. However, as we take an isolated look, without the enclosed canopy, Circus Circus driver John Prevost would never have stayed in the cockpit in a flip like this. Today's unlimited hydroplanes are sophisticated, highly technical racing machines. We now salute the men who pioneered and led the sport into today's modern era. 1951, Seattle Gold Cup driver Orth Mafiat and riding mechanic Tom Whitaker in the Quicksilver. 1961, Detroit Silver Cup, Bob Hayward in Miss Super Test 2. In 1966, the darkest day in the sports history, three were lost in the President's Cup. Washington, D.C., Ron Musson in Miss Bardall, Rex Manchester in the Notre Dame, and Don Wilson in Miss Budweiser. A week later, in the Gold Cup at Detroit, Chuck Thompson, when he rolled the Miss Smirnoff, in the restart of Heat 3. In 1967, Bill Brow and Miss Budweiser, Suncoast Cup at Tampa, Florida. 1968, Colonel Warner Gardner in the Miss Eagle Electric during the final heat of the Gold Cup in Detroit. Tommy Fultz in 1970, the Little Buzzard during testing at San Diego. Skip Walther in the Red Man entry during testing at Miami in 1974. In 1977, Jerry Bangs in the Squire, first heat of the Seattle Seafair race. And as previously mentioned, Bill Muncy at Acapulco in 81, Dean Shannon with the Tri-Cities in 1982. One of the most famous names to ever drive an unlimited hydroplane was band leader Guy Lombardo. Lombardo drove his tempo boats to 15 victories, which were then dubbed free-for-alls under the sanction of the Inboard Racing Commission. His most recognized victories under present-day racing standards were the 1946 Gold Cup at Detroit and the 1948 Detroit Memorial. 
Miss Pep's Five, owned by the Dawson brothers and driven by Danny Foster, emerged as the first ever High Point National Champion. That was 1947. Up to 1958, the Unlimiteds competed under Inboard Racing Commission sanction. Lee Shinneth, who drove his Gale Five to a Gold Cup victory at Seattle in 55, had a better idea. He went to APBA Council and asked that the Unlimiteds form their own commission, and the Unlimited Commission was born. Well, I helped form the Unlimited Commission in 1958, and at the time, I was still driving a boat. I didn't think it was quite right for a driver to be commissioner. So I asked that they appoint uh, George Trimper, who was just the former president of the American Power Boat Association. He served for one year, and then I took over in 1959. Our biggest job in the old days was hanging on. We didn't have a five-point uh, seat belt, and we didn't have all the stuff they have now. Yes, the drivers have more instruments to watch, they have buttons, electric buttons on their steering wheels to adjust their wings and their tabs and all the various things. It does take a, it's a little different art now than it was. Ours was stab it and steer it and hang on. Let's salute the top three all-time winning crew chiefs, Jim Lucero of Seattle, leads away with 60 victories. He's currently with the Winston Eagle Turban team. In second place, Budweiser crew chief Ron Brown with 26 victories, but he leads in the Turban category with 25. His only other victory came as crew chief of Miss US-1 in the 76 Gold Cup at Detroit. Third on the all-time crew chief list is another satellite, George McKernan, who has 21 victories combined with three racing teams, Miss U.S., Miss Exide, and the Miss Budweiser. Leading the list with 78 career wins is Miss Budweiser owner Bernie Little. These Thunderbolts are not aerodynamically balanced by accident. I think we built about four boats that we put in the wind tunnel, uh, models of the Miss Budweiser and Marietta, Georgia. And... Uh, uh, it really told us so many things that would help our boats be safe. And we have shared every one of those things, I might tell you, with our competition. Uh, anything I do, as you've known me all these years, I'm very involved in anything I do. I don't own anything I can't fly or drive or uh, I, I'm a part of whatever I own. Second on the all-time owner's list is Bill Muncy, who not only collected 62 victories as a driver, but 29 as an owner. Two are tied for third, Oli Bardal with 27 wins during his reign with the Miss Bardal teams, and Joe and Lee Shaneth likewise took the checkered flag 27 times with the Gale Racing teams. Others with 20 or more victories include Dave Herensberger with 25 wins with the Pay and Pack organization, and Fran Muncy, who following the death of her husband, Bill, led the Muncy Racing team to 24 victories. Today's owners are just as competitive, and their race boats with advanced technology are traveling the fastest in unlimited racing history. One of which is Steve Woomer, who is about to move into the top ten in the winning owner-driver category. 
I mean, the Winston Eagle is really competitive. Mark's doing a tremendous job, and it's just real close, exciting racing every heat. Uh, what of the final was a half a mile an hour separation. Seattle, we couldn't ask for more. Let's take a look at the rest of the current unlimited owners that are taking a beat at the leaders. Jim Harvey, who came up from the ranks as a crew member, crew chief, and now owner of the T-Plus team. Also, veteran Bill Wooster of the U8 racing team with many a race under his belt. He's looking to compete. Ron Jones Jr., grandson of pioneer Ted Jones and his U50 Spirit of America team. Representing 13,000 owners from the city of Madison, Bob Hughes, the owner's rep. The father and son team of Ed Cooper Sr. and Ed Cooper Jr. in the Cooper's Express U3 team. Al Thorson and his driver partner Jerry Hopp in the consistent U7 racing team. Brian Kehoe, the U9, saw limited action in 91, looking to more competition in the future, as is the Ruskowskis brothers, Mike and Larry, in their prototype Miss Ed Shaving Gel. The top drivers in the water today include Mark Tate, from Rookie of the Year to World Champion in one season. Scott Pierce coming on one race into the high point season and securing the team world championship for Budweiser. And one whale of a job turned in by Mitch Evans, whose U3 broke every existing piston engine speed record in 91. And Bob Fendler's U19 Turbin getting stronger with Ken Muscatel at the wheel. And now let's take a moment for memory. here at Pitt Row, we have the Commissioner Don Jones. And Don, how would you assess the 91 season for Unlimited? Well, it's really been outstanding. Uh, we've had a great fleet of boats, uh, 10 or more at every race site. And uh, they all looking good, great uniforms, and the competition has been the best we've had it uh, in many years. Where do you go now in 92, with that coming up not too distant future? Well, another exciting thing is coming on. Uh, the race sites are coming back in uh, because of the recession. Uh, we lost a few last year, but uh, we have New York that we're looking at on the Hudson River and Long Beach, California for Los Angeles area and Kansas City. It, it all looks very, very positive, plus some international racing that's in the mill right now. The competition was never more evident 
than at Madison, Indiana. Last year, the closest competitive heat in many, many a year. Dick Crippen and I were there for the call. Winston Eagle, Mark Tate taking the lead as they come out of turn number two now, and they hit the back stretch. We're going to watch closely because the Miss Budweiser is coming up on the outside. It looked like a possible problem for the Valvoline Miss Madison. He was in lane number one, Mike Hansen was, and he had said before the race he had problems in that lane, getting the boat through the tight turn. He's back up. Let's see if he can keep it going. Meanwhile, the leader is the Winston Eagle. Second place is the Miss Budweiser as they power down through the far turn and come back under the bridge again on the Ohio River in Madison, Indiana. Boy, they're really honking as the Miss Budweiser on the outside comes underneath the bridge, but it's the Winston Eagle with Mark Tate holding that buoy line the shorter way around the course at an average of 136.8 miles an hour. And Jim, the Valvoline Miss Madison has gotten going again, so Mike Hansen is back up on play, and he'll try to make it run for him. In third place right now, the American spirit, Mark Evans, is trying to hold it in there. He's got a battle on his hands, though. Right now, the lead boat is none other than the Day Glow Orange of Winston Eagle, and it is the Miss Budweiser trying to catch him on the outside but again that inside groove is making the difference in this particular heat it was the winston eagle inside lane two to the budweiser's lane four and they were making the difference with the inside as we can see there the shorter distance around the track are you ready for this as they come down to complete lap number two 135.8 for the lead boat winston eagle but two miles an hour faster in second place for that lap for miss budweiser and i believe we're going to have a challenge. And it looks like it as they go into the turn now. Miss Budweiser stays heavy on the pedal. Remember, there are some real holes in the water coming out of that turn. But as you can see, Mark Tate held the boat even in there. There you see the American spirit now trying to hold on to third place. If he can, he's being challenged by the Valvoline Miss Madison moving up. There you see Mike Hansen's boat. This is still your lead boat, but he's definitely got a challenge on his right hip. Gets a little bit light coming down into the final turn. Let's watch closely. Miss Budweiser's coming in. He's closing it down only about a boat length and a half. This is Scott Pierce coming hard on the outside. Winston Eagles sees him in the mirror, and there's the checkered flag. It's a drag race down to the finish on the Ohio River. A light boat for the Winston Eagle. As they come down, it is Budweiser by about a nose. Holy cow! That's the closest finish we've seen. Shades of last year. Shades of last year. Look at the battle. We got now for third as Mike Hansen brings the Valvoline Miss Madison on the outside, coming side by side to the American Sprint. An identical finish for third place finish in the same heat. What excitement. Miss Madison wins third place. Again next summer and for many summers to follow, Thunderboats will thrill millions of spectators across this great country of ours. We hope you'll join us at the race sites or follow our progress by radio or television.